soul observes in silence the coming of wisdom. The coming of wisdom is something that can be seen. It is an observable thing. One can feel it coming at a distance, but it can be felt. How is it that humanity says, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. What light does it see? It sees nothing, but it knows that it is there. It feels and remembers somehow. This is what it feels like at the midpoint. It feels like emptiness. It feels like aloneness. And carefully it begins to remember that separation is but an illusion that it is dark which reveals the light and in this remembrance that is when it begins to feel feel not think that it is coming through it or through something I'm coming out of it I think I see the light at the end I see the next beginning and in essence that is what comes it is the next beginning and the next chapter it is the next aspect and both the soul and the human breathe a collective sigh of relief the worst is over at least for now without even knowing what came over it the overcoming of that also comes and the soul begins to infuse the human with light vigorously a vigorous light an animated light of a different quality now the human is no longer searching for another teacher or the next teaching it is looking for itself it is looking for its emergence it is searching for its truth it recommits itself to the discovery of that in this life to the re-emergence of its being, it redoubles its efforts to work on itself, to know and to be. It begins to take inventory, to take stock of its life, to begin to discard those things that no longer serve it, whether it is a thought or a belief or an idea. The soul is awakened now, empowered, and the parallels between human and soul well there is a joining then the parallel lines have become oh so thin the veils oh so thin between the two that the human feels itself to be its soul and purpose and the soul feels itself to be the empowered or the enlightened human and for some for many a true merging takes place what you might call a mini ascension if you like but what is the ascension if it is not the lifting of the veils or the merging of light and dark or the revealing of the greater truth for those that are of a mind then and of a heart there is a reawakening there is a purposeful walk to life the stride is changed now the shoulders are rolled back one lifts one's head, one's chin, and looks forward, looks within, and then looks without, looks about life or its circumstances, and without as much pity, and without as much lament for its walk, or who has walked upon it, or taken advantage of it. It begins to live again, to begin again, this time as one, a soulful life. A life with the possibilities of being wisdom filled, with a rekindling of heart and passion, with a desire to be not simply a human, but a humanitarian, to be a peace bringer, or one that at least upholds it to seek for peaceful thoughts and compassion, to hold that which is within and to offer it to others, to lend a hand, to lend support, 
Does this come about for all beings? No. And it is not necessary. It is not necessary to become a philanthropist or a humanitarian or to go about doing good works in the world as if that were the only measure of enlightenment. No. Instead it is to bring about the next generation of truth to uphold that. The purpose of life is life and life itself and only life. The purpose of life is light and that of light is life. And it is life that ever creates and recreates itself. So now the being has reached a midpoint of life. A midpoint of life. That is not to say the same as the chronological midpoint. Here we are speaking of the midpoint of life's essence. The midpoint, the crescendo of life, at which one reaches a great height where truth is concerned, where light can be known. And while we will assign this for the purpose of this speaking to near and about the age of 50 or the 50s, it is not always so. But we will invigorate it this way. We will give it potency this way. We will say it is the second half of life which becomes of first importance now. For now, the being knows that the halfway point somehow matters, that the next moments will matter more, that it has studied and learned and grown, that all things have come to mean something, and it has discovered as well those things that were meaning less. So it is a fine time for discarding as well, discarding what is meaning less, or having the greater purpose in that revealed. What did that moment mean? What did my childhood mean? What did I overlook that I can know now? So it is a time of knowing. It is a time of coming into knowing. And the soul takes delight in this. And the more that the human aspect wonders, what does it know, the more that the soul can answer. It is a time of great questions then, great, great questions. And the human begins to ponder those great questions of life and for the first time to have them answered as well, not to ponder them in that way as if the question could be discarded because the answer will not come. No, for every grand question the soul has an answer, a purposeful one, a direction, it will offer itself from the library of life, from the past experiences, from the karmic path and the dharmic path, the answers flow from Akash, from the libraries of the great civilizations and the great lifetimes lived. The soul fills and fulfills the human in the waking state, in the dreaming state, in the meditative and contemplative state. It is as if the human has walked into a garden of knowledge. It can be overwhelming. It does not know what to believe. Now those that drink or take in too much and too fast from this area, well, there are side effects, so to speak. There is an overwhelming to this. There are addictions that can be had. Yes, one can even become addicted to the search for knowledge. For the search for knowledge is not knowledge itself and can lead to its own form of blindness, you see. The search for knowledge, then, is one that will put one on the path of wisdom if it is administered correctly, if it is guided by the soul. Wisdom and true wisdom comes, for it is the soul that knows more than any other that there are the wise and the half-wise. Those that attain the half-wisdom, like a half-life, does not mean that they will continue to look to forward. So the soul's guidance becomes paramount now. The two become one, and the path becomes entwined. One step forward, one step back, and one to the side, for the binding element is still present. All things must be bound together, 
Your body, after all, is bound together. You do not see all of your energy spilling out about yourself, though at times you do not guard it well. So the soul binds together the knowledge, like a book is bound together by volumes, by chapters. It is not scattered to the pages and the winds of life. It is not blown to the background where you will forget. The soul binds together what is most necessary, what is important, what is healing, what is vital. And so the life continues forward. And the half-life or the new or the next birth, the soul celebrates this. For the human and soul both are reborn by choice. And the movement continues, taking delight in all things living. And so here then, the grand being begins to take delight in the smallest things again, in the lighting of a butterfly, in the lighting of a lantern, if you like. All things, simple and grand, take on a profound notion, a profound meaning and contentment, yes, not happiness at having something or going somewhere, but the idea of true contentment is born. And so the soul watches and guides and takes delight in this. And so the being grows and grows, becoming more and filled and delighted. And then the next phase comes, and then the next. The soul continues to grow, it continues to observe life. The soul is always yearning for more, but it is a true yearning. It is not that which is born of dissatisfaction. It is more of a yearning of wanting to see, to be, to discover. Now, for those that are in some ways so aligned, and have the ability to look beyond the earth, the soul is able at times to begin to infuse into the human life memories, simultaneous memories, of other worlds, of other lives. Now this is not the same as to bring knowledge to the human aspect of what or where or how it has lived in the past. It is not this. Here comes simultaneous knowledge, not even what you term déjà vu. It is not. It is the aspect of life that sees life everlasting. So it is the birth of simultaneous time in the now moment. And carefully, the soul will infuse then into the human such memories of other aspects that are taking place all at once. To the human, it may seem as if it has simply now become very empathic. Oh, how compassionate it is. How empathic it is. How it can feel what it is like to be that, to be there. But it is more than that. It is a different kind of knowing. It is a kind of knowing that comes or that bridges past and future, then and now. What is, what could be, what might be. It is a way of binding together all of life so that the one human becomes all of humanity and in this way all of life upon the earth progresses and moves and expands into greater truths. You see, it can be that the life of one human gives meaning to another five or ten or fifty or one hundred or more humans. So for all those who have had unconsciousness, for all those who have fallen into the backward abyss of life, for all those, as we said in earlier chapters, that may have been somewhat feel abandoned by the soul that has moved to another aspect of itself, here now you have a reinvigorated soul, animated many, many more humans. So that, for instance, the work that you, yes, you, are doing right now, that particular work, that can bring about growth, awareness, peace, upliftment, 
and owe so much more to others. Imagine that. Imagine that the work that you do, that you accomplish, goes to pay for another. Well, that is a very human thing after all, isn't it? That the accomplishments of one serve the many. The one work in favor of the many so that the many benefit the one. For that is the way of it after all. The easing of separation, the drawing together of all that is. The life then becomes one that is worked, worked for the one and for the many, so that the light will not only illuminate your path, but that of others, not only your forward step, but that of others that follow. And is that not the way after all then? So the soul works then tirelessly, with small effort, but with great, great devotion for this particular aspect, for this particular path. Now it can be said that one is truly on one's path. One's path is not what one does in life. It is not a career. It is the path of discovery. It is the path of light and of enlightenment. It is the path of sharing. It is the path of leadership. It is the path of calling forward. It is the path of dispelling darkness. It is the path of revealing that which has been protected or sealed. So now the soul works tirelessly to unseal. Perhaps you have heard that, that certain truths are sealed. That one comes into the time of the unsealing. Well, this means that those things that have been protected are revealed. Those things that are sealed means that they are protected, that they are sacred, that they are worth protecting. So when something is unsealed or unveiled, it means that in that moment it no longer needs protection. It does not need to remain hidden. It is secure and it is sacred. So now comes then the sacred path and the sacred walk. And again, I remind you that this has little to do with what you do in your day-to-day -day activities. It is much more related to what you are, to what you call to yourself, to what your patterns of thought take delight in, to the maze and the labyrinthine truths within you that seek to know and to become now you have entered the spiral. You are no longer now on the linear path, no longer walking and walking and walking to here and to there and back again. It is the spiral. And it is an important time for there are those that become lost in the spiral as well. You see, it is not about the question nor about the answer. It is about the unveiling of the truth. Therefore, again, there are some that become lost here. To come from here and there again, one finds oneself cornered, here to there and back again, there to here and back again. It is a box, you see, it is a trap. Equally, a spiral can become a trap, for you can spiral effortlessly upward, effortlessly downward, but have no place, no position, no point of reference. This too can become a trap those that seek only for their ascension without understanding what the meaning of this is. It is a trap to move ever upwards, going somewhere, being nowhere. It is a trap. So I bring this awareness to you that you will be well accompanied in your thoughts. It is not what you attain, then it is not the answer to the question or the solution to the problem, but it is the exploration of it. It is in the knowing of it. It is in the discovery of it, of all of its truths, of all of its frequencies, of how it is arranged and how to rearrange it. In this is the discovery of all things. You see, it is not in the meaning of life, it is in the ability to range and arrange life. It is in the ability to create and recreate life. It is not about the beginning or the end of life. It is about it's re-creation. Again, to bind and to unbind. 
It is often in what is unseen. It is in that unseen elemental range that the most can be known. So here now the soul brings the gifts and the treasures and the diamonds and the pearls for now they are well received. Now they can be known above all things. They can be known. They can be known. And so the soul progresses following the being, following the human life, accompanying it in all its ways, in all its purposes, in all its directions. And then the next facet, the next phase of life. Ah, and what is it then to be a sexagenarian then? What is it that the human knows when it attains 60? Ah, well, there is a glance to the backward. There is a part that says, oh, I am beyond the halfway point now. And here is another caution. For of those that fear the halfway point, there is a great fear of the midpoint, you see. What is it to be in the midpoint? And when one passes the midpoint, what is that? It seems as if too much, too soon. Half a life has gone by, and now it is more than half a life. Now one begins to think that they are not only in the second half of life, but beyond that as well. So there are some here that begin to look for a second purpose or a greater meaning to life. And there are those that begin to lament the life itself again. Too much of it has gone by. Look, my body no longer appears to be as youthful as it once was. So much that I thought I would know and do by now. But I have only gone this far or done this much. And so the soul quickly, quickly works very much with the human to bring to it what counsel, what soothing, to assuage its fears and perhaps to lead it down a different corridor to a different thought that it has not considered before, leading it to new possibilities again, inviting it to see life in its own different way. Now here in this moment, one of the ways that the soul accomplishes this is to reveal something completely different, as if to open a trap door, a side door, and invite the human to say, Look, you've never gone this way before. Why not try this? At times you will see that there are those then that have a complete different beginning to life, a second career, something completely different than the first, something they never would have chosen to do in their younger years. And yes, perhaps there are those that will choose another mate as well. For again, remember, it is the soul that wishes to see, to know, and to discover, and to live, and to free itself. And so all manner of new possibilities reveal themselves again. To this being it is the new, all things new, that become exciting, and here again it begins to discard all those things that no longer serve it. Here, take it. You can use it. I don't need it any more. Here, give it away. Sell it. Offer it to another. I wish to travel. I wish to see the world. I wish to remake myself. And so here you have not a next beginning, but a new direction, perhaps. And the soul will now begin to bring bits and pieces of other lives into this one. Yes, it begins to infuse them as if it were a fine wine, a gentle perfume of another time, leading and guiding one to look in directions that it had not contemplated before for a very, very long time. Perhaps there are those that would say it is a second childhood, but it is not entirely that at all. It is a natural curiosity that has been reborn. And, for those that are willing and wanting, the soul will bring the new resources and the new ways to do this, companions along the way, and another way to view life itself. And so the sexagenarian will begin to look to the stars again, the inner stars and the outer stars, wondering about how life is put together, what is the glue of life, what is it that I am, and what is it I can impart to others? So there is the beginning of the one that becomes the teacher. The teacher is born. The teacher, the way-shower, is born. And, of course, the more humble this comes about, the better. For arrogance will not do at this time. There are those that are all too 
arrogantly will say, do it my way, do it this way. Do not make the mistakes that I have made. Do not travel this way. Save yourself the trouble. I already tried that. Ah, but you see, the soul is wiser yet, and the soul will quiet this. It will quiet this voice, and it will instill, if at all possible, a peace in this one to go quietly in ways that will lead to greater truths. But to those that do not, to those that do not quiet the arrogant self, for here is a time in which it comes again. For those that do not, cannot quiet the arrogant self, at times the body itself will slow it down. Now, what happens when that which wishes to accelerate and is capable of accelerating is set back or slowed on purpose? Well, at times, in the physical, then, that appears as if putting on the brakes. Yes, putting on the brakes on a vehicle. On a cellular level, on a molecular level, everything begins to slow or to stop, to become retrograde, if you like, retrograde motion. And there are those then that do not break soon enough. And perhaps as you have known, seen, or experienced, there is the hitting of the wall, a sudden attack, a heart attack, an attack of this or that, a sudden necessity to stop, to observe, to change a habit, a sudden need to have the assistance of others. No, it is not a moment to be arrogant. You cannot do it yourself now. Now is a moment to pause. And for some there will be an issue of health, or concern, a mental faculty, a breakdown of sorts. It is not a punishment, no. It is only to say, pause, look inward again. Look to all that you have accomplished. Take stock in that, take root in that, take heart in that before moving forward again. So for some it will seem a setback. All manner of setbacks come about. For some it is a financial setback. For others, it is an emotional one. All manner. These can be easily overcome. They can be, but they are not always easily overcome. The soul works again tirelessly with the human, rebinding, reinvigorating, remembering, and bringing together all manner of gifts that it can to assist the human to bring together quality again, quality moments to soothe the savage nature of the arrogance again, to temper that as it would be. And again, it is not that this must always come about. In fact, it is only nearly 50% of the time that it comes about this way, so the odds are very good that it need not be that way. But perhaps, as I have said, you have noticed it in your own life or that of others. And if you have not reached this stage yet, then so much the better. Let the caution stand, Len. Let the guidance be given. Let the wise heed and take note. Breathe lightly as life offers itself to you. Breathe lightly into your own life and into the life of others. Glance lightly. Do not stare at the cares of others. Lend a hand as has been said, offer wisdom even to the wise and be humble about it. Let it be at a whisper, not a shout. And there you will know that you are accompanied by the soul, for you will well know that soul and spirit do not shout, and their wisdom is often no more than at a whisper. As the moment continues to invite itself then the soul and the spirit and the human come forward all at once and the soul begins to stretch and to see and to be and to discover and to feel fulfilled the life is a success the life can be felt it can be given it can be shared it can be known it is a successful life time 
Now, here is another important juncture then, because depending upon the relative success of the life and how invigorated the soul is and how purposeful and yearning and creative the human is and how much spirit is in the moment, all of this will determine whether in fact there is a next phase in life or not. Remember that the soul does not measure itself by the longevity of a lifetime. Matters not how long a human life span is, matters the interest of the soul. And once the soul is fully developed and fully engaged and fully present in life, that is when it begins to determine how long is the life that it will live whether in fact it chooses to live another year or five or a decade or more. So here there is a re-evaluation where soul, spirit, mind, body, all aspects come together. And many do not know it and they are not aware of it, for much to do with this takes place on the inner planes. If a new or a now or a next purpose is present, the life will continue. If it is not enough, a grand or creative purpose, then soul will assist the human aspect in terminating its life or terminating its contract or an agreement. Now, let us carefully examine this for a moment. For to terminate a life or agreement is not the same as to cause the death of the human. It is simply to say that the life purpose has been served. That all that the soul wished to see or be accomplished has been. Or that as much light as could possibly be attained or held by this body or by this life stream has also come about then. Therefore, there is the decision then, the decision of the light and the truth and how to offer itself into the next moment. And in that way then comes the truth, comes the next abiding and the decision of how much soul there is present in life. You see, the soul then is the teacher of life or life's patterns. The spirit is that which animates the lessons of the soul as well as maintains all of the human properties. The spirit, in essence, is part of the binding element as well. And so when that is present at times, there is a moving of the energy in which the soul again moves into the background but the spirit moves into the foreground. These are exchangeable in a sense. Now, this is by way of saying that there is not a grand soul's perspective of growth. However, it is the spirit then that animates all things, the playful side, animated, yes, animating all things. And so a life again can take a different course, a different direction, one that is not spiritual, if you like, one that needs not attain anything other than its own satisfaction, its own playfulness. And perhaps here you will see that there are those that enter then a very playful part of life. The personality changes altogether. One perhaps even becomes a grandparent, so the child says, well, they were not like that when they were a parent. I do not know how or why they have changed, but it is a different being that is in our midst. And so the being is then able to rekindle different relationships or to establish estranged relationships in a different way. It is the spirit then that is able to retrace the steps, to remake them, to recreate them. Now is a time then in which it would seem retrograde again, as if one appears to go backward in life retracing one step, doing and redoing, remaking its mind, or doing simple pleasures and simple things. Why? 
Well, because it did not have an appreciation for it at the time. It did not have the consciousness associated with it at the time, and now it does. So the spirit now animates these things, and the personality that has much less fear now and has well accommodated itself to life in many different ways understands the process and is more of a partner. So here now is the time of partnership with life, to partner with life itself, to offer the best of oneself always, companionship, partnership. The walk of life becomes one of comfort. The soul is still present, but the life lessons are not so severe now. They are not so grand. And it is not to say that one retires from life or retires from one career, though one could time these two together. It is not necessary as it were, but at times it is. And so life becomes a great orchestrator and the garden of life begins again. The garden, the invitation to know and to see things through the garden of life and the eyes of the garden. And so we pause here and we will continue.